Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's presentation. Thank you so much for being here. If you've joined us on previous presentations, thanks for returning. We hope you've enjoyed the past presentations, but this is the fourth and final installment of our Back to Business presentation. And today we are going to be covering the topic of the power of and I'm sure as business owners across the country, we all know this a little too well. Um, pivoting kind of was the theme of 2020, but we don't want that to kind of stay in the past. We want to bring that momentum forward. So we've got a great presentation for you today. We have two great speakers. If you've joined us in future presentations, you already know these two ladies. So we have Roseanne Freitas from the Better Business Bureau. And then we have Irene um, Gonzalez with the Small Business Administration. And so they'll both be covering this topic. And we do, if you've never used Remo before, it is a unique platform where we'll have some networking at the end. So if you are interested in doing a little bit of networking, that will happen once we close the presentation and you can hop from table to table. Your microphone should already be muted and your camera should be off. But as we start to do the networking, you'll want to have those on. And then we do have a chat box going on. So if you want to introduce your name, your city and state, you can do that in the chat box. You can also chat with specific people. And then we also want to hear from you if you have any questions as we go through the presentation. There's also a Q&A tab that you can specifically ask questions to our two presenters today. So I'll be keeping an eye on that. And one more thing before we get started, we are sharing a PowerPoint. So depending on what screen you're on right now, if the screen is too small, if you go ahead and close the chat box, that'll make the PowerPoint screen a lot bigger so you can see the slide deck. So with that being said, I will turn it on over to our first speaker and that is Rebecca. Thank you, Rebecca. And thank you all of you for joining us today for our, our last webinar in this series. Um, and it's a fun one. So we're, we're looking forward to talking about the power of pivoting, right? Something that's really uh, come to the forefront uh, in 2020. So you've seen this on the other presentations. We talk a little bit about our standards of trust at the Better Business Bureau. These standards, when you look at them, you're like, well, yeah, that really makes sense. And that's really what a business needs to look at. This needs to be what you build your business on, all of these type of standards. So we want to highlight those. Our last three presentations, we were able to weave these standards most definitely into that. And you're gonna see that today as well, because as we go through times of change, as a business, it's very important that we are uh, to our consumers. We need to always be honest with them and tell them what the truth is, and, and honor any promises we made. That is how we build the trust. So let's uh, move on here. I'm sure you guys have all heard this one. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah, we've heard that. Um, and we've, a lot of people refer to that. However, I think we all know that that doesn't work anymore. Times have changed and it's time we all learn new tricks. It doesn't matter what your age is. We're learning something new each and every day. And so do you as a business owner. So that's what we're going to focus on here today. So business agility, you've been hearing a lot of words in 2020. Two of those words were pivot and agility. So what does that mean? It's just the ability to adapt, to change, to respond, because the market is changing and it's changing fast. And you need to be able to respond in an effective manner. So to be able to do that, you actually kind of have to have that mindset in place. So we're going to talk a little bit about today about what that takes and maybe how to rethink how you currently do things and plan ahead so that when something happens like a pandemic, you can react quickly. I'm going to show you one example of a company uh, that just came out recently that I think found a real good pivot here now. We all love Girl Scout cookies. And that was the other thing here. It's getting time again for Girl Scout cookies, right? How are we going to get them this year? 
in a pandemic. Kind of a big issue for us who love those thin mints and other type of cookies. Well, what they did this year, what they're going to do in 21, is they're partnering with Grubhub to deliver those cookies. That way, the little kids do not have to go out and deliver cookies, keeping everybody safe, but at the same time, allowing the Girl Scout mission to continue and again, adapting and pivoting with a company like Grubhub. It's just one example. Up next, Irene's going to talk about an example of a company in Boise. Irene. Thank you. So give us You're welcome. We can definitely see that there's some nice little packaging here. And if anyone's in the Boise area, you may have heard of City Peanut Shop. There was a nice little article that was put together for them and it shared some nice pivoting ideas and some concepts that they realized over the year and they wanted to be able to share their story with everyone. And so basically, if you've never tried City Peanut, they've got just wonderful array of flavors of different peanuts and they have candy and different uh, merchandise and accessories. So they've got a storefront and then they also have wholesalers. So what they did was they saw their online sales increase 600% and they are in store to open up a second storefront, which is on the way. So what they chose to do was they had not prioritized the online side of their business. So with everyone not being able to go to the stores, they had to rebuild their site. So they got a professional photographer and they got busy marketing their online presence, which made it easier to interact with their customers. And they created a better curbside pickup and delivery options. And essentially the end result was 641% increase in web sales. So if you aren't already online, you might consider looking at that. Now, granted, they did have a challenge, which was keeping up with high demand of those online sales and, and the commercial demand, but they felt that they had great customer support. And in this time, that was really critical in building the bond and the relationship with your customers to let them know what you're doing, how you're doing it, how they can still stay connected with you. And so definitely find those ways. And we're going to share some of those here in the next few slides. Thanks, Roseanne. Now, a nice quote here, whether you think you can, or you think you can't, you're right. Basically, it is a mindset, how you choose to move forward. And I did a presentation earlier and it was changing a product focused mindset to a customer focused mindset. So it is, it's changing your mindset and it is a mental attitude. It's how you look at something. And we'll give you some ideas here on the next slide. Reasons to adapt. Roseanne said it nicely earlier with agility. Adapt is another word. So we're kind of shifting, turning, looking for some different avenues. But adapting is working with things that you currently already have and finding some different solutions for them. Technology is huge. A lot of your business may have to go online. We've had to do a lot of Zoom calls. We've had to find some technologies to help a lot of our employees work from home. So definitely technology was one of those reasons for us to adapt, but then a lot of us had found good reasons that this could be a new norm for us. Customer demands, we had to adapt and either create a better website, make it more user-friendly, and meet those customer needs. And if you've, if you've ever gone to someone's website and you're trying to order food and you're looking for the different menu options, you're looking for how do I pay? How do I let you know 
if I want to reserve something. So looking for all those little parts and pieces are so important. Electro economic situations, certainly recessions, pandemic, maybe something's obsolete. So pivots may arise from a challenge, but they also give you a new perspective and they educate. So you definitely need to look for ways to be successful. And this could even be in your career or your business. On our next slide, Roseanne's going to jump in. Yes, I think it's my turn now. So Irene and I are going back and forth. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about the business owner's perspective. So what do you need to do to be agile? Well, first, if you're the business owner, you, get, you need to get comfortable with being uncomfortable because that's part of the process. Previously, in our more traditional ways of doing strategy, it was more of a top-down bottom. But now, it's not just top-down, it's bottom-up and out to horizontally, meaning you need to use everyone in your company to come up with that strategy. And that is a different type of thinking. Instead of just everybody looking to the top leader to say, what, what do we do? How do we do it? Where do we go? You need to look at the whole company to come up with that. And you need to have that in place and teach your employees how to do that so that when things do arise and you do have to pivot, everybody's already in that mindset that we have to all solve the solution together. Because not just one person has all the answers. If you've looked at your team, you'll realize everybody has their strengths and their weaknesses, right? So why not use those strengths to build the team, build stronger, learn more and be a better company. And as fast as everything is moving, especially with technology and all the changes these days, planning and executing these ideas are happening at the same time. Previously, we had the luxury of we plan, plan, plan. Okay, now we're going to roll it out and execute. Customers are too savvy these days. They want things now. They want it fast. So times are plan we're planning as we're executing. And then that brings us to this fail thing. And sometimes it doesn't work. Now, we've got to not beat ourselves up because that happens. But we have to learn quickly. Okay, this isn't working. So either we don't do this or we find a different way to do it. But it's okay to throw that idea away. And sometimes we've spent so much time and energy putting it together, we have a hard time letting go of that. And that's where as a business owner, you need to say, this isn't working as it is. Let's pull everybody back. How can we switch it? Or do we just need to throw it away? Again, it's being quick and making quick decisions. But the mindset of thinking and being able to be that agile and being able to think quickly and changing everyone's mindset, it won't happen overnight, everyone. It will take time and people will mess up, but it's a start. So when you're building that team to help you, the biggest one is empowering the team. And if any of you are business owners, you know sometimes it's hard to let go of that control, right? Because ultimately, at the end of the day, you know you're on the hook for it. But you've hired these people. So if you've hired them, hopefully you trust them. And trust is imperative to whoever you are with your customer, with your business, with your employees. So if you've hired them to do a job, you need to empower them to do that. So they're going to make mistakes, especially when we're trying and innovating new things. And the last thing any of us want to do is fail and be called out for it. So as the business owner, you have to promote it and look at it as mistakes or these so-called failures as opportunities of growth and reward the team in the sense saying, hey, that was a really good try. How can we pivot this or do something just to make it even better? Because people aren't going to take a risk if they think they're going to get their hands spanked. So you have to allow them to have that leeway. Always promote innovation. And with that comes risk taking. Anytime you try something new, there's always a risk associated. And it goes back to that not punishing same thing to yourself. If it makes a mistake, okay, pivot. Do something different. It's not the end of the world. It's time to just go in a different direction. Always encourage your employees to have ownership of the tasks at hand. It's very important. I think for anybody who works, we want to feel a sense of belonging, but that people look to us for what we know and value that information. So go ahead, encourage them to take ownership and to lead the way. 
that really does help them grow. It helps your company. And rewarding those independent thinkers and those experiments. Yes, you have to be careful what you're doing, but at the same time, if you try nothing, you get nowhere. And if you don't grow and innovate, your company is stagnant and it will not survive. We found that out last year when we had to really figure out how to have business with the doors closed. And the hardest thing for anybody is not to micromanage, to be able to let go and trust the people that you've hired. Again, that stuff won't happen overnight, but it's what you're working for. If you have employees that you don't trust, you might have to rethink that too. How can you build that trust and how can you find the right people to have on your team? So again, with building the team, we, we, we talk about creating these horizontal communication channels and that's within a company. Now, if you're a small company and I have worked for small and I have worked for probably somewhat of a medium size, I've never worked for a huge, large company, but I know in a small company, it's really sometimes easy to stay in touch with each other because you're in the same office. You communicate a lot more. However, the bigger that your staff grows, the harder that communication is. So it doesn't matter whether you're small or big, understanding what your company does as a whole is really important to the whole team. If the team only knows one part of the mission or how it functions, it's a much harder to innovate and come up with great ideas unless they know the whole picture. So encourage departments to talk to each other and to collaborate with each other because you may find they come up with better solutions that way. And put these teams together and allow them to work on their own. You don't need as an owner to be in every single one of them. Yeah, at the end of the day, they need to report back to you, but, but let them come up with the idea. Let them figure it out. And especially if you see some talent that's up and coming, maybe put that person in charge of that task at that point and say, you're the tap, you're in charge of this task that we're doing, you're the lead. Again, that helps create leadership as well. Have a timeline and tangible objectives. So, okay, we're gonna look at this. This is what the goal is and what, whether it's a service or a product and let's see what we can do. Find, it has to be a reasonable timeline and it has to be a reasonable objective too, right? What is it we wanna accomplish? How long will it take us to get there? How much time do we want to invest if it's not working? Those are the type of things you want to look at. And it's an, this type of information and team building, it's an ongoing process. You're always thinking of ways to innovate. Now, don't mistake your normal, usual business with the innovation side. They are different things. So you still have business as usual and you still have to perform those tasks. But set some time in your business week to come up with some innovation how your company can be better and include that whole team involved, involved in that conversation. So Irene's gonna come back and she's gonna talk to us a bit about what customers are doing and then ask you some really important questions on your business. So Irene, you can, can you join us back here and bear with us some of the technologies a little faster or slower. Hey Irene. Thank you so much. Yes, we definitely, need to focus both internally and externally when it comes to adapting and then also including. So customers are very important. We wanna stay in tune with them. So customers are also adapting. So when we wanna purchase something, we can't find it, we're, we're looking for it. So we're struggling just as much as the businesses are. So how has your business aligned with what your customer needs are. So just like my story earlier, did you update your website? Have you reached out to your customers? Have you connected with them? Have you let them know what your safety protocols are or that you now offer curbside or, de or delivery services or, or now they can make payments online? So actively communicate with your with your audience, with your customers, let them know what's going on, because we definitely don't want to drive to a store or your establishment and then come to find out oh, they're not open on Mondays or your hours have changed. So if we're going to get into a habit of doing the research before we step out the door, you definitely want to keep those different either social media platforms 
and your website's up to date as well. And are you aligned with what your customers want? So maybe their needs have changed. Maybe they have different hours or because they have kids at home, they're not able to have access to a lot of what they're looking for. And so have conversations. And I would encourage you to get some feedback and do surveys with your customers, asking them point questions. What can you change to help meet their needs? So have you adjusted to your customers' new purchasing habits? Well, you first need to understand what they are so you can adapt, but then also understand what the changes within the current environment are making the customers adapt to so that you can meet those needs as well. And just like Roseanne mentioned, having a reliable brand, say what you are going to do, mean what you say, and follow through with it, which will then be addressed in your social media, your marketing, websites. It all comes back to customer service. So align your business with the new reality, which we now have, what is our new normal gonna look like? Things have changed. They do need to be different. And you are going to be stronger and better after you change. And as Roseanne mentioned, that is going to be a mindset of, if you go into it and say, yes, I'm gonna be better because of this. I'm gonna succeed and I'm gonna be stronger because I've made improvements. But you have to be able to say it and do it and follow through with it. And your customers will thank you because they're going to stay connected with you. Now, I don't know about you, but I, for one, definitely have these two items in mind when I do any kind of purchasing. And if you think about it, you probably do too. Two things that are going to sway any purchase, emotion and logic right? Our emotions are either going to be urgency or we're going to need to buy that birthday present because we waited till the last minute. So now we're now we're hurrying or the logic is, well, now does this cost too much or am I paying for all the things that I need? So there's some different factors. So definitely look at the different factors. But ultimately, we are looking for emotional satisfaction. Either way, we want whatever we're buying to make us happy. So that's your focus, which is going to lead you to create a message to develop a brand. And it is, you have a brand to address what those customers are looking for. And that's going to represent what your company stands for. And it's going to show who you are as that owner. And so let your customers know that you've acknowledged the situation. All right, we know that there's a challenge or we know that we need to make some adjustments. But then reiterate why you are in business. We are here to meet your customer needs. We want to be that source for you. Let us show you what we have. Make those statements so that they can also see that you are determined, but yet you're also passionate. A lot of times you started your business because you're passionate about helping someone, making a change. So tell them how you help them right now, which are those adjustments, the changes. How can you meet their needs? How have you adapted? How are you helping them adapt? By strengthening your bond with your customers. So important because who doesn't like to have someone remember the last purchase or that they remembered their name. That is huge. That is a strong connection. So I would encourage you to find ways to either establish that bond or continue the bond. And most importantly, as with any growth of a business, you have to manage the cash flow and plan for the future. Now, we don't always know what our future is going to hold, but I can almost guarantee that having cash, financial structure, and a good foundation is going to be imperative. So 
track your invoices, you know, know where you're at. And I'm sure that we've heard this phrase, plan for the best, but be prayer, but prepare for the worst. And that actually is something that I instill in a lot of businesses is look through your operational plan, look through your financial plan, look at it weekly. Notice the red flags. How do you keep those finances down? How do you manage those expenses? And always keep an eye on your credit. Unfortunately, there's a lot of fraud going on. There's identity theft happening. You definitely don't want to be caught up into it. But you also want to be ready so that if should you need to borrow money, then you have a good conversation with your lender. So create that relationship with your CPA or your bookkeeper and also your lender. You need to have a path to continue raising capital or making sure that you have access to capital because that's going to be important as your company grows. Now, we always hear the negative talk versus positive talk. It's really easy to get discouraged when things aren't either going our way or it's hard to see that light at the end of the tunnel. So by saying, oh, I just can't do this. I don't have the tools or the resources or, well, maybe my customers won't, won't like it if I make it harder for them or change is hard. And sometimes we're a little nervous making those those new adjustments or it could be that that falls under the, the SWOT analysis of your strengths and your weaknesses. So if some of your weaknesses are I'm not good at the social media. I don't understand the financial statements very well. So you're saying that you're not good at something. You need to turn it around. You've got to be positive because whatever you're doing needs to get you up every day. If, if you need to open up your, your door, turn those lights on for your business, you need to be the one who builds your team, pulls them together. So definitely have that can-do attitude and you're going to say, nope, I'm going to be this person. I'm going to pull us along. So you are going to conquer those those issues, those different challenges. And it may not just be only you. As Roseanne mentioned, pull your team together. It is your team that makes your business. Thanks, Roseanne. Thanks, Irene. And Irene really covered some really good points there. What, and before we move on to the next slide, I really want to focus on this negative versus positive talk that she talked about. If you remember in the beginning, we talked about that Henry Ford quote, if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. And that's where that talk comes in. If you say to yourself, my, oh, my company can't do it, we can't pivot, we, we don't have time to innovate, we can't plan this. Well, you're right, because you don't believe it. And if you don't believe any of it, you can't make it happen. And that's really the first tell of anything. You have to look in yourself and look at your own mindset and change that talk to yourself and think about it. Because as we talk about having your business ready for any quick changes, we it really starts with that mindset and how you approach it. We also talked a little bit about the accounting of it, of course, making sure we have the money there. And that's why we always say for that rainy day, right? And then working on our customer service, having these plans in place. But again, at the, as the owner, it's going to start with your mindset and getting your team to that mindset. So a few years back, I myself had that where you're you question, right? Everything you do in your ability. So how can we change that? How can we start talking to ourselves differently? So here's some suggestions to turn it from negative to positive. So get a journal. And I'll be honest, do not, I'm not a big journaler. That's not my thing. Uh, just remember, nobody's going to read it and you don't have to worry about grammar or punctuation or anything. But write 10 to 15 things that you are grateful for each day. And they don't have to be big things and they don't have, they can be the same thing each day. Like for me, mine is that first sip of coffee in the morning and that peaceful time just to collect my thoughts. That's something I'm grateful for each and every day. Aim to exceed in what you do. We don't want to do bare minimum. None of us do. Always try to do more. 
Talk to yourself with positive words. Let's stop the negative talk to ourselves. Keep everything in the positive and be kind to yourself. It goes back to that believing in yourself. It's very important because for other people to believe in you, you have to believe in yourself first. So it's going to start with you. Treating others with respect, very important. Because if you treat them with respect, they in too kind to do that back to you. I think every day we should treat everyone with respect and because we don't know where they're at and what has happened to them that morning either. Being empathetic, it really with customers goes a long way. Try to put yourself in their shoes and see it from their side. People really appreciate when you've taken that time to help and see it from their vision. Always be compassionate to your customers, to your employees, especially as you're going through some rapid changes. Understand where we're at and that they may just need a little time to breathe a little more on that day. I can't emphasize being authentic enough. Be who you are each and every day. It is hard enough to be ourselves, let alone to try to be someone we're not. Authenticity comes across. People know when you're telling the truth and they know when you're being yourself. So be yourself. Say thank you and be kind. I think if you work on some of those things, those will help you turn your thought process around and come out with a better mindset that will help you as a business owner start to focus on how maybe little changes in your company or how bringing in all your employees together can help you turn your business and pivot. Also, share that with your employees. See about them, maybe writing what they're grateful for each day. It really does help change your mindset. So we talked a little bit at the beginning about teaching old dogs new tricks, but we all can learn a new trick if we put our minds to it. And of course, I had to end that with a cute little puppy. Um, dogs are just some of the best. So we we covered a number of things. And if you, it's hard sometimes to walk away from a webinar and know what to take with it, probably the biggest thing is mindset. Mindset and a plan. And in your plan, include your team and come up with ways that if we should face another pandemic, that your business is ready and is planned and able to make a quick turn. At this point, I'd like to turn this presentation back over to Mr. Rebecca Barr to close us out today. Rebecca. Hello, thank you ladies. Another great presentation. Um, one thing that kind of sparked my brain when you guys were talking was the book called Failing Forward by John Maxwell. And I think that's a great mindset, mindset to pass along to your employees that it's okay to make mistakes because we grow from mistakes. And as long as we fail fast and learn something and move forward, then that's okay to try new things. So I just wanted to pass that information along. But again, great presentation, great topic. I love this topic. Um, I, so the, in, we have a few resources. First, let me share, this is Roseanne and Irene's contact information. If you have any questions specific to them, if you'd like any additional resources, or if you have a question on some, a, something that they covered, reach out to them. Their phone number and email addresses are on the screen. Um, very easy to get a hold of. And then we have two websites. We have the BBB website, which trust-bbb.org is going to be a resource for you as a business. So there's a ton of information and resources for you. And then the SBA, of course, has their website, which is sba.gov. And then they have state-specific websites, depending on where you're located. And again, great resources on both. When I when we close the presentation and go into the floor, we'll have some networking opportunities. So if you are interested in talking to other attendees, getting some face-to-face -face time, you can turn your camera on and your mic on. And then you'll also see our logos at the bottom of the floor plan, which will get you to those websites. Um, so this was our final installment of Back to Business presentation series. So I, again, want to thank the SBA and Roseanne and Irene for doing this four-part series and all of you for attending. I will be sending out a survey 
um, either this afternoon or tomorrow morning, it should be hitting your inbox to kind of get some feedback from you all. How do you like this platform? How did you like the topics? And what can we cover in the future to really help you and your business? We'll probably also be sending out along with that email, a copy of this presentation so that you have it. And then if you, again, would like to stay for networking, I'm going to close the presentation. It'll open up the floor. It'll drop you into a table. You can jump from table to table by double clicking on the table and you can talk with different people at your table. It's kind of a cool platform. So we'll see you out on the floor. If you'd like to have any questions for us or would like to chat with us, we'd love to hear from you. And so we'll be around. So thanks again for attending and we'll be, we'll be back. I'm sure.